Hello and welcome to Edumate.tv. I'm Stuart Nisha. We learn to live and live to learn in what has turned out to be an unprecedented situation, an unprecedented pandemic, with history being written across the geography of Mother Earth, and a minor virus has created a major catastrophe, making each and every one of us rewind, rethink, re-strategize, reformat, restructure before we rebuild a new life, a new education life, a new normal. In the field of higher education, they say, the complex issues that are up, particularly post-COVID and the NEP, are something which are unforeseen for several. In fact, the complexities are such that the challenges which are emerging often find weak solutions. And the weaker aspect is the inability to create opportunities. And to do that, you require a strong past in terms of experience and knowledge, and more importantly, a very flexible, adept mind to be able to anticipate the future and mitigate the challenges. That's why we have a very wise Chancellor. Well, today we have a very special guest with us, Professor Raghubir Singh, joining us from the Tirthankar University at Muradabad in Uttar Pradesh. Thank you for joining us. Uh, what a pleasure to, to talk to you today. What have been your uh, understanding, your experiences, your challenges uh, uh, since March 2020? I, I, in my lifetime, never faced this kind of a sudden disruption. And uh, frankly, we were not prepared for this kind of, uh, uh, you know, unprecedented situation. And other nobody predicted it. So though technology uh, has been, you know, doing rounds for quite some time, but most of us neglected it because we thought it, it, it's not much use. You know, education can only be, uh, you know, delivered uh, through a physical contact. That was, you know, thinking till then. Uh, technology as such was more important for self-learners. You know, ever since the closures were, dis uh, you know, disclosed uh, in the country, uh, for about 10 days, we were dumbstruck, let me tell you, what to do. And then when we, we looked back and also, you know, predicted that it's not going to go any soon. And thereafter, we started getting together. So we started thinking about getting the technology and use. The first thing we took a decision was, let's upload all our study material, all our videos, and uh, uh, you know, all our slides on our website. This was the first thing we did. And then started planning our, uh, you know, uh, using platforms, uh, delivering our lectures. Now, we were quite skeptical to begin with it. You know, but within a week's time, uh, we realized that yeah, it would work in the given situation because everyone has accepted the reality and we all thought there is no alternative to it. The only survived to us is the technology. The next game is what to do now. We delivered it, the question of examination. How do we assess them? So using the, those very platforms, uh, we actually started making first some internal assessments for the sake of experiment, you know, right? and we succeeded in that. And so we had two formats for that. One is a uh, MCQ, as we called multiple choice questions, and another one was, uh, uh, you know, personal interviews with the group of faculty. Now, those personal interviews, in fact, brought a lot of changes in the students. You know, in subsequent uh, weeks, uh, the companies started uh, interviewing our students online. So in a way, they were prepared to face camera. This, otherwise, they were very shy of camera. They say the hallmark, the first step of the hallmark of a great leader is to A, recognize that there's a problem. Yes, B, true. admit one's limitations. And yes. it's only then that you can try and find solutions. Solutions. That's correct. I salute you, I salute you for, 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 in fact, fulfilling all those uh, those hallmarks which are required for great leadership. These two are, are, are very integral qualities also what uh, espouses the new education policy uh, of this country. Uh, sure. One very, uh, uh, you know, interesting part of the policy is the desire to take or to reignite uh, uh, India's past, the heritage, the Gurukul system, 
uh, of, of education and try and merge it with the futuristic technology, you know, uh, to bring out, uh, you know, a solid leverage uh, on both accounts. Now, uh, when I hear the name of your university, uh, it tells me immediately that there is already a sense of alignment. So I'd like to understand your mission and how is it aligned, uh, you know, in detail uh, with the NEP. If you look at various provisions of uh, NEP, the shift is uh, from memorization to critical thinking. The purpose of education, you know, way back, uh, great scientist Einstein said, the purpose of education is to develop thinking. Another one, uh, uh, Simon also said that the education should be able to develop thinking and develop ability to do. And these both components were missing. The only choice of method of teaching learning is lecturing. Lecturing method has limitations. You know, it's, it's a good tool to share information to a large audience, but it can't involve students. You, you know, rightly said, Gurukul system. When you look back at the Gurukul systems were very unique. Small batch size, you know, taking care of every child, and, uh, and hand holding them, guiding them, making to do things, and then correcting them. Now, this is not possible in a large batch of 50, 60 students. So that was one aspect. Okay. And since there were, you know, few uh, pockets where, you know, education excelled in so-called, uh, you know, institutions or minions, and then that all were government funded, we came very, very late uh, into, you know, realizing that uh, private participation also have an equal chance. So the private education came quite late in uh, our country. So they, therefore, we could not spread our tentacles. We couldn't take education to the last mile. And uh, it, it, all, it, it became, you know, so-called elitist. But beyond that, there's something called intelligence. I, I'm going to take this one step further. Uh, yeah, it's, whatever you point out is, is absolutely beautiful, well taken and, uh, you know, very insightful. Uh, from rote learning uh, to critical thinking. What you yeah. Mentioned. I'm going to shift this now to another level of awakening and I'm going to come back to the point I was trying to make of the great uh, uh, Sage Mahavira who was enlightened. Of course, it requires a, a lot of substance to get enlightened. But how do you manage to put a path, a person on the path of enlightenment at the early years? You know, because all of us realize, you know, as we get older, that there's so many things we should have done in a particular way which would made a, make us at least more awakened and more mindful. So is, is there some practice that you follow at uh, the Deepankar Mahavir University? A leader, irrespective of the sector in which he or she is, has three important skills. Conceptual skill, human skill, and technical skill. As you grow higher and higher up the rank, the requirement of particular skill changes. So if you are at the top, you, you should have a highest conceptual skills. Technical skills, you don't require because you are not an, someone who is executing. Are you able to conceptualize? That means establish interrelationships. Are you able to visualize the future? So a leader has to have that conceptualization skills. And then you should have to understand how education is delivered. Higher education, you know, unlike secondary and primary education, do not have a trained manpower. When, when I entered in this profession, Soon after post-graduation, I was pushed to the classroom. I had no idea how education is delivered. Whatever I learned, I learned over a period of time. It took almost about 25 years for me to realize what I'm supposed to do. How education is supposed to be delivered. Absolutely. So, so yeah. what you tell me, I infer two things. A, there's a huge opportunity for online training and a huge need for it. Uh, yes. Because every opportunity stems from money. Uh, and the second thing what you're telling me is the need to be uh, have a higher employability quotient and focus in while imparting education. And that's really one of our purposes at EduMate.eu. We say educate to employ. Yeah, that, 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 that's I mean, it may be limiting, but it's very important at that age and stage of life. Uh, so what are you doing on, on that track? We actually recognize, you know, that is a tripod of uh, educational objectives. One of the leg of the tripod is employability and entrepreneurship. Second one is research. And third one is teaching. 
we being a private self finance institution cannot afford to have a research focus because it takes long time and requires heavy investment teaching alone where you are able to you know create those degree holders is not going to help us so we you know deliberately chosen to be an employability uh, enhanced institution that means try and create those students who have a higher potential for employability thereafter as i was as i was discussing earlier we looked at those three important uh, you know domains of learning the first one was cognitive uh, second was affective and third was psychomotor how are you going to enhance the students iq that is ability to have higher thinking order you know rather than only understanding i would like to emphasize on applying the concepts analyzing evaluating and creating how do i do it i can't do it unless otherwise i have uh, my pedagogy changed i have to predetermine what outcomes am i expecting from a given program to my surprise or maybe to your surprise education is the only sector which has no predetermined outcomes so much of effort resources are put into it do we in our real life undertake any activity without predetermined outcomes no a lot of people might come and say okay here there is a predetermined outcomes people get degree people get employment that's not a predetermined outcome predetermined outcome has to be in terms of learning now to you know achieve this we created for for example in cognitive you know higher order thinking we i have myself trained almost about 700 faculty members of my own university on how the education has to be delivered in the classroom and followed that by ITW that we call intensive teaching workshops where we created the self help groups of senior people they would assure that every faculty undergoes series of presentations in the classroom before he she is allowed in the classroom that's point number one right so we we assured that a faculty involves our student we call that experiential learning you know that involvement can happen in the classroom it can happen outside the classroom second one the affective domain which i talked about we created a department called center for you know uh, learning and development okay now that central responsibility was to deliver all that soft skills part or people skills part in our students we have a 20 faculty strong center that delivers we almost about 14000 students and we deliver to every student these soft skills and third one we call it that hard skill or psychomotor we have actually developed i call it basically employability index enhancement through uh, matrices and, and uh, grids you know so pick up those critical skills then we looked at whether we have a potential in our university to deliver those skills if not then how do we do it do we collaborate it do we hire people do we have to create extra resources or not next we you know again i i ask my principals to develop another grid wherein the uh, you know uh, competence of my faculty and interest of the faculty is determined so that at the end of the program or two years or three years or four years, whatever the program period is my students actually go out of the university with at least two to three employability skills the other half hallmark i see of, of a great leader is to lead from the front and it's 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 quite amazing how you've done that in such a short period of time you know and just the passion with which you say that you trained several hundred teachers yourself uh, lays testimony uh, to that effort so i salute you for that uh, the, the other interesting thing which i will infer from your your uh, conversation was the several cautions that you brought up and that uh, uh, makes me more interested in knowing a little bit about you Uh, okay. because the, your logical uh, interpretation of that uh, tells me that your your career itself uh, would have been quite a learning curve it has been quite uh, a learning curve I've, i've been on upswing i belong to a farmer's family right whatever i did was done a hard way like a farmer right i i had my engineering education and i taught for two years in education so the logical mind comes from there now i, I realized that education of no use unless one able to you know achieve that ability to perform something and when i when i was at you know manipal university jaipur when i was heading the business school i wanted to change the way education was being delivered you know and for that 
as a leader you have to understand the education itself so i read quite a lot you know i am so much interested in uh, reading the you know great education uh, uh, philosophers you know various learning theories uh, various you know grades various uh, methods everything i want to learn all about that so that i can use that in whatever way depending upon the context it's it's not taking straight out of there and you know be blinded and implement and then fail no you got you got to actually chip it you you got to really mold it and then see what 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 fits you well you you picked another box of of great leadership and that is the quest to continue to to progress and learn uh, you know so you obviously ticked all the boxes uh, so i congratulate you for that uh, uh, thank you so much uh uh i'm going to come back to one question uh, you know uh, on something you mentioned a little while earlier because we are getting towards the concluding part of this conversation and that is when you talked about the shift to online education now i also noticed that you know uh, uh that you're based in muradabad which isn't yeah. blessed with the best digital connectivity uh, mm -hmm. you know around your your area and uh, to my mind in my conversation with most of the the education leaders uh, one of the biggest the most potent threats of a digital divide looms large on us so what has been your experience on that front there was a problem of uh broadband no doubt about it uh i asked my principals please connect with every student connect with every faculty I, it may not be possible for me to you know touch base with everyone sure. but i asked them to connect with everybody so that you know they know that there is a strong support from behind and there's a lot of interest and there's a you know a lot of zeal uh, in all of us to make this thing happen you know there has not been much complained about in at least in our area about the you know connectivity issues so that when we were having examination there were some complaints we said don't worry about it we'll provide you another chance it's all elements to make a democracy uh, uh, professor ragu yes yeah uh, true yeah, true conversation uh, professor singh has been truly inspiring and uh, i want to leverage that inspiration and uh, request you uh, uh, to give a, a spot of advice for four people who are four uh, you know very critical uh, pillars of this education ecosphere which have been uh, you know very intensely impacted by uh, covid uh, a your fellow vice chancellor uh, b the student c the teacher and fourth the parent what would be your advice to them how to proceed now in this environment i would say let's look at what is our role as a leader you know academic leaders for, for me there are four five most important roles of academic leader first one is devising and assuring future positioning of your university that's visioning and looking for a road map of university any institution cannot go directionless you have to determine a direction you have to determine your own position and relent relentlessly have a pursuit of that you are more likely to do better not only your own university even for the general society enhance education quality so put a, put a strategy in place how do we enhance education quality enhance your visibility across all media across all possible ways because if you enhance visibility you are more likely to attract talented students talented faculty and have a good you know connectivity across develop a great team and happiness among them and ultimately students satisfaction and last one i say i create an enabling and a, Uh, culture of excellence these are the five things this is as far as uh, my fellow leaders are concerned fellow yeah for my uh, faculty teachers follow that you know process we call learn and learn and relearn continue relentlessly on the path of learning and of course other aspects are you got to research there, there is today's world there is no place if you cannot research i'm not saying that you got to be a great researcher right. but you should have that mind of a researcher see select a track while mastering a track have understanding of other tracks also don't forget about them and then for my students 
I said, put massive efforts if you really want to learn something. Learning doesn't come easy. Have a focus. Determine for yourself what is that you want to be. What is that you want to be? Not what you want to become. There is a difference between the two. What you want to become and what you want to be. Hmm. So what happens when you become engineer? Is that over? No. So we need to understand what he or she wants to be. And to be that, got to be very focused, put massive efforts, enjoy life as usual you enjoy. Don't be what we call a copycat, a rot learner. Finally, the parent works. Parents have to, in this age of technology, have to have a watch on their children. Where are they going and what are they doing? If they can't guide them more, just have that watch. You've been a truly inspiring leader and an, and an, uh, and an interviewee. Uh, this conversation has, has educated me and I'm sure it will educate our, our, our viewers multifold. I often end off, you know, uh, with an alliteration so that our viewers can, can uh, you know, can easily structure uh, their key takeaways. My conversation with you uh, would definitely reveal one letter that is F. F for frankness, which is the recognition of, of, of a great leader. The second F would definitely be further. Your further means your quest for continuous learning and evolving and improving yourself, which is, which is quite brilliant. The third is, is the word front. The third F is front. Whatever I hear from you tells me that you have led from the front. This is again a hallmark of a great leader. The fourth F, the flexibility. Uh, the way you, you changed tact when you encountered a problem and you, know, and you made yourself adept to be able to you know, switch. Uh, keeping your goal in mind, switch your ability, your path, your tactic to reach that goal. You know, it's quite marvelous. And the final one is being futuristic. Uh, it's just a sense of, of progression which seems to be so steeped in your quality of leadership that makes you truly, Professor Raghuveer Singh, a very wise chancellor. I, I really salute you, your efforts. It's, it's not just helping two of us, it's helping the broader audience. And that's the great work which you are doing. And I wish that this goes much beyond what we are doing today for the greater good of the society.